Thank you everyone for joining today's uh, Interfaith Giving Circle Confronting Hate meeting. Um, looking forward to sharing more progress with you that we've made over the last two meetings and continue moving forward. Um, so my name is Muhi Khwaja. I'm a co-founder at American Muslim Community Foundation. Um, we had this idea last year to create this giving circle working with a network of individuals and families and really anybody interested in funding this initiative across the country. Um, generally speaking, you know, giving circles are maybe done locally or um, to amongst a circle of friends, uh, but we really thought that this community together could um, come to consensus on types of organizations that they would like to support and uh, find causes that are confronting hate. Um, so that was a little bit more about the idea there. Um, and we always try to do this, these intros alphabetically, uh, and we always mess up. So maybe today we can make it work. Um, but, but by first name, we'll, we'll start with you, Aziza, and then you can pass it on to the next person. Great. Um, thank you for organizing this. Um, I'm Aziza Hassan. I'm with Newground, a Muslim Jewish Partnership for Change. And Newground really focuses on building relationships and working through hard conversations so that we can build and do things together. So a lot of our people do projects and other things that really focus on um, connecting, but also doing things like blood drives and, um, and like, especially right now, cause there's, uh, shortages cause people donating, um, is even shorter, like the, their shortage is worse than it usually is, um, et cetera. And so, um, really finding meaningful ways to give back to community and to combat hate. So with that, I pass it to Fryan, right? That's the next person in. Yay. I can alphabetize. It's on you. Thank you. Um, my name is Brielle. I apologize, I'm off camera. I'm at work, so a little multitasking a little bit here. Um, but I work at Children's Health Found Medical Center Foundation in Dallas, Texas. I work in healthcare philanthropy and stewardship and donor relations. Um, and my, can I, can I say, Mohi, that? <laughs> yeah, of course. Am I allowed? <laughs> the official? <laughs> um, I also just just joined the AMCF board, so I'm really excited about that. Um, so yeah, that's just a little bit about me. <laughs> yeah, we're so glad to have you, Faryal. Thank you. Um, and let's see. I think Liz. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know my alphabet too. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, great, thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Liz Weingartner. I am a philanthropic advisor at Morgan Stanley and I lead our faith-based initiative. We have been building a Jewish values resource for our clients over the past uh, few years and now we're expanding into other faiths like Catholicism and Christianity as well as Islam. And we're really interested in the interaction between faiths and the values that underlie all of them but also the differences that make them unique and strong. So we're uh, really excited about uh, activities like this and um, really excited to be a part of the group. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and the next uh, on the group, oh boy, it's a lot of the same letters. Okay, uh, I believe, so Muhi, you already went. So let's see. Uh, Rod, I believe you're next. My name is Rod Cardoza. I'm with Abrahamic Alliance International. We're based in San Jose, California. Our mission is to unite Jews, Christians, and Muslims for active peace building and poverty relief. Uh, before COVID, we were doing like one event a month, com one compassion event a month, where we would get a, a church, synagogue, and mosque to agree on a date where they can serve the community, usually kosher and halal meal services to the homeless. And, but then after COVID hit, we started um, doing events almost weekly. And uh, with uh, not only blood drives, um, heard a lot of good things about new ground, but um, we are also doing like hygiene kit builds and Habitat for Humanity emergency housing builds and um, uh, even bike repairs for the homeless because, you know, if the homeless is going to be more than survive, they got to get around, right? So, so yeah, lots of different events, food distributions and so on. 
keeping very busy. So it's been it's been great. We also have a, a kind of in-depth educational program where we get some world-class scholars to teach their own respective communities about bridge building seminars about the other community, but kind of accelerating their learning um, in their own faith vernacular. So we got Rabbi Reuben Firestone to teach a understanding Muslim neighbor seminar. And we got Amr Hussein from Loyola Marymount preparing the understanding Jewish neighbors seminar for the Muslim community and so on. So, and next is Sarah. It goes Samantha. Samantha, thank you. I won't see all the names in front of me, yeah. I am Samantha Bacciolo. I am the assistant director with the Sisterhood of Salam Shalom. Uh, like many of you here, we do build, bridge building work um, with Muslim and Jewish women and teen girls specifically, um, bringing them together, allowing them to learn from and with each other um, and building you know, strong female leaders in, in interfaith circles. And uh, I think I echo something that Rod said, which is, you know, we had a, a series of events before COVID hit. And since the pandemic, we have, you know, that has increased probably fourfold uh, because the need is there. So glad to be here. Thanks. I believe our next is Sarah. Hi, everyone. Um, I am Sarah Lomelin. I'm the executive director of Philanthropy Together. Um, we are uh, an organization that supports uh, and, and connects the collective giving movement. Um, and we work closely with MUHI and uh, very happy to be with you all here today. We're all about, you know, uh, getting more people to start giving circles, to join giving circles and to really, you know, uh, expand this uh, philanthropic model that for us is the perfect way to democratize and diversify philanthropy. So thank you for having me. My apologies for being late and my apologies because I will have to drop off super early today, but I, I just wanted to be here at least for, for a few minutes. Appreciate you. Uh, and last up we have Shazine. Hi everyone, um, I am currently a nonprofit change management consultant working in the diversity, equity, and inclusion um, field. I have previously worked in nonprofits for over 20 years uh, and a lot in interfaith and community based organizations. So um, we have uh, quite an active uh, interfaith community here in uh, Southern California. Thank you. Wonderful. Um, so over the last few meetings, um, we explored our personal motivations of giving. Uh, we talked through this general concept of uh, the importance of giving circles and why they operate. Um, but for today's discussion, I wanted to take it a little bit more into the planning process of the giving circle. Um, so I have a document that I will share my screen uh, with all of you. And I can also share this document in the chat in case people want to follow along. Um, but essentially we are hoping to um, put this, uh, together and be able to share this document with other people and then encourage them to participate and also promote the giving circle. So at a really high level, um, and all of this, you know, can be edited, we can put our own words into it, feel free to use the suggestion mode and we'll update it collectively. Um, so in the last meeting, we kind of identified that hopefully you all feel comfortable being part of the leadership committee and we can come up with specific roles later on, but at the high level, like we want each of you to feel empowered to participate in this planning process together. Um, so the general purpose is to generate more awareness and funding to faith-based institutions. We want to leverage relationships with mainstream philanthropy to provide matching support. And we want to educate communities about giving circles and collective giving. Um, so on a very high level, it's to 
broaden the scope of uh, these interfaith organizations doing great work in communities across the country. Um, now, when it comes to membership, um, a lot of giving circles will set a minimum amount of what it means to be a voting member, um, but really any amount of donation is appreciated uh, and can be given to the collective pot of funding. Um, so for instance, in our women's giving circle that just launched last month, they have a minimum gift of $420. Uh, and that $20 comes to AMCF for managing the giving circle, but then the 400 goes to the collective pool of uh, distribution. So there is a 5% model fee that comes to AMCF for organizing, processing, collecting, distributing um, the funds. Uh, but beyond that, you know, when you think of your personal participation in this giving circle and your network of other faith-based leaders across the country, what do you think of would be an equitable amount um, for voting participation in this? And this is like an open discussion, so feel free to chime in. Well, one interesting model I've seen um, is, uh, I don't know if you're all familiar with Ujima or U Ujima in Boston, but it's a, it's a, I guess a giving circle. I don't know how they would describe themselves, but basically it's um, an organization that's focused on black entrepreneurship and sort of funding working class. That's how they describe themselves, like working class people. And they have um, a model where you know, any size donation allows you to participate and get a vote, but they also have a maximum amount. And if you give over that amount, you become basically a sponsor and you don't get a vote. So it allows a targeted participation where members of the community are really the focus of the group and sort of larger sponsorship organizations like you know, for instance, if a mosque or, or a federation wanted to make a large contribution to the group, they could in a sponsorship way, but then they wouldn't have a vote um, in where the grants went. So that's just an interesting model to see like who has a voice at the table um, and could also shift like how fundraising works and, and what sort of the outward facing look of the group is. So I don't know if has anyone seen models like that or um, how they sort of operate in the giving circle space. I haven't seen it, but it's super interesting, Liz. Um, and, and, and I agree, like what, what I have seen is more about, you know, yes, having the minimum and then you have the members that can vote. And then you also have these friends of the circle, right? That in this case will be the sponsors, but it will be either people that give at a lower level than the floor, but they cannot vote or at a, high, at a very high level, right? Like matching funds, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, because I do agree with you that it's important to keep, you know, the focus on the community members as, you know, the, the people that will be voting, um, but without closing the doors for other people to be able to participate financially that will benefit, you know, the circle at the end of the day, right? Um, what I have seen some circles do is maybe the members uh, closer to their grants night or the or the yeah the moment they are going to give grants a couple of weeks before that they start like some maybe like peer to peer fundraising campaigns and invite their friends and families you know to be part of the circle and say hey you know my circle is about to give this amount of grants we would love to grow the the pot uh, the funding that we will be giving out would you participate and that way you know uh, they raise you know a few thousand dollars more for the circle that makes sense in terms of um you know, 
on the participation side, like we'd love for each of you to also participate, right? So, um, you know, the goal is to be able to launch this giving circle at the end of the year um, and kind of seeing, you know, whether that's like a June, July timeframe is like a public launch of then we begin recruiting. And then um, we can request nominations of charities to be, um, to apply through an LOI. Uh, and that can be done in like the August timeframe. And then essentially from August to September, you know, those charities can be reviewed. And then uh, distributions can be made in Q4. Mugi, I have a question regarding this. Are you uh -huh. thinking that the different uh, organizations like to have like an open application process or more like by invitation only? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, typically how we've done it at AMCF when we host the giving circles, it's that it is member nominated organizations. Great. Yeah, and, and you know what I bring this up is that as we as we know, you know, it depends on the amount of the funding that we have, right? Like we don't we don't right. want you know to have ten organizations applying if we know that we're we'll only be able to give maybe two grants or one grant or something. Right. So, yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, I I really appreciate when we have information that kind of helps with the like here's what exists. Um. Uh, and like, so like when Liz, like when you explained like the Ujima in, in Boston or Sarah, when like you were talking about like, you know, caps and et cetera, like, I feel like what would really be helpful for me to be able to give you feed or give feedback to this conversation. Um, uh, like I'm a nonprofit professional, right? I care deeply about breaking down hate in and around us, but like, um, what, would be helpful is to kind of actually like this women's circle, like are there certain specific expectations that you really do want to happen, Muhi? Um, and with the goals, et cetera. And like, what are some things that are already like kind of standard um, and then that we can wrestle through and say, actually we want ours to focus here or we want this cap to be here and this to be here. Like it's just a uh, perspective, bird's eye would be really helpful. Yeah, um, you know, for the women's giving circle, they focused on women-led or women-focused organizations as their criteria. Um, and I think it makes sense for then this group to maybe focus on like religious intolerance uh, initiatives, uh, xenophobia, or just faith-based organizations, but, you know, that's still very broad. Um, and so there could be a variety of organizations that still fall into that category. Um, so how they tell their story of, you know, if the, if the title of this giving circle is Interfaith Giving Circle Confronting Hate, like what do they do to mitigate that hate or work against uh, tolerance and under, work towards tolerance and understanding. Um, so I know many of your organizations that you represent could make that case, right? Um, and I think for us, that's we want to keep it somewhat broad-based so that there could be a variety of organizations represented. Um, but maybe, you know, if there are still, say, a dozen or 20 applications, um, then really honing it down to those top three to five that would then be invited to present to the entire group um, and doing that through like consensus voting 
Um, and you know, each member would be able to pick their top three or top five organizations. And then it would be voted on. And then those organizations, like I said, would be invited. Um, does that make sense? Or did I answer your question, Azita? Yeah, you gave me more information. Thank you. I'm still going to seek more just to give you a warning. Of course. Yeah. And we always want to provide as much information as possible. I, I, um, I just have some thoughts and feedback. Um, having applied for grants, uh, being on the other side, I think the thing that's always the hardest is to apply for grants when you are a small you know, serve a small community, not many, you're, you know, you're not on the radar of major funders, uh, things like that. And I would hate to get very um, exclusive where it's only people who know, because, you know, smaller communities like the Sikh community and things like that, that um, especially that are not involved in a lot of the Abrahamic, you know, faiths, um, they wouldn't ha necessarily write, have as many members participating, right? So in an inclusive, more participatory way, it, I would like it to be a little bit more where we're, we're open to things and maybe do a resource mapping of what organizations exist out there because what we don't know, we don't know, right? Sure. And I would, hate, I would hate to leave out communities just because they're smaller communities. Oftentimes they need more help and need uh, to be part of collaborating. Um, so I would just advocate a little bit more for being, you know, having some element where we reach out to communities and then also have some element where um, small organizations can get on our radar without being um, chosen by, you know, one of the select crowd. Mm -hmm. I wholeheartedly agree. And I think I've said in each meeting, like, I want to have more representation across the faith spectrum. So um, let's invite more people to these meetings and, and get the word out from now so that we make sure that everything is done once we start publicizing and uh, like that, that we're hitting the right target audience. Yeah. I agree, but I, I'm wondering is, do you have to be part of the circle in order you know, or know someone in the circle that's then going to recommend you? You can't, like, there's no... And I'm not saying we need a huge RFP process or whatever, yeah. but maybe some way where people can um, become part of the process, even though they don't have a, um, a champion already, you know, that's involved or something like that. Right. I think keeping it member nominated makes sense because, again, like we could end up with hundreds of RFPs if it does really well. And we want to make sure that um, there is a connection to somebody within the giving circle, right? So that they know the charity, they know the organization, they know the membership. Um, but beyond that, I think, you know, definitely want to make sure that, um, you know, that's why we're focusing on you as community members, because you're plugged into the interfaith community. Um, so we would hope that your nominations are reflective of that community as well. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, um, Lord, thank you for popping in. Um, Want to bring you into the conversation as well. Um, so we're just talking through different types of uh, membership structure, um, what recruitment could look like, um, and what the focus of organizations should be. Um, and then kind of working through a timeline as well. Um, but in terms of, um, you know, I, again, I wanna bring it back to that minimum contribution um, as part of the conversation, because I think this is gonna be one of the most um, critical components. Uh, and, you know, whether we have 15 members in the beginning or 100 members or more, um, I want to make sure that the group here feels like at least the minimum amount for a vote 
um, has a lot of consensus and discussion um, because we know people may have capacity for a thousand or five thousand dollars, but that's not the reality for for everybody. Um, and those who have the capacity to make that gift should be more than feel more than comfortable to still make that gift. Um, but we want to have a democratic process in participation. Um, and, you know, some, some of the groups have a $50 um, entry and other groups have $5,000 that we host. So we have a wide variety and just kind of want to hear from the group in terms of what you think would be uh, equitable and appropriate uh, minimum contribution level for a vote in this giving circle. So for me to answer, be able to answer that question, um, I'd have to kind of know like what our actual goal is as this particular circle. Are we making that decision now or are we like um, yeah. trying to build out the rubric first? Yeah, we can have those conversations if that helps get to the minimum idea. Um, so when you say circle goal, um, what do you mean in terms of um, in terms of that, Aziza? So I mean, like you know how you at the top you mentioned like the women's it had to be women led, and then sure. like, what I love about Ujima is that it's it's it like clearly they're targeting a specific place. So it's like figuring out what the target is, what we actually want to accomplish mm -hmm. um, so that we are excited about this and are willing to put our money down, right? So it's yeah. like, also like when I would go to a donor, I'd be like, all right, like here's our vision. Um, and I want you to invest in that vision. So I guess it's really almost like a vision and like, and the, and the who we want to actually, uh, like what we want to actually do. Yeah. So beyond the faith-based or religious intolerance or xenophobia lens or um, what are other goals that you see um, this group trying to accomplish? So I think it would be like, um, like, are we asking for, like, I don't want to waste anybody's time. Um, mm -hmm. I want them to know that they can, they hit the mark or not. And so it's like, if we can focus enough to say, um, you know, uh, we this is a giving circle dedicated towards, um, uh, I guess it's like organization, like uh, projects or like, are we project based? Like where people are asking people to do projects in community together as people of faith? Are we more like um, heart centered in the sense of like the relationship and network is more important to us because re relationship and network is actually what resilience comes from, right? And so um, I guess it would be the, maybe it's like a, a more definitive statement that says something like, um, this is a circle um, that seeks to um, dismantle uh, xenophobia and bias through active engagement or something to that level through, through building networks. Um, I don't know, I would throw something there. It would, like, I love that I, I, I hear you about xenophobia. I would just wanna kind of lean in a little bit more of like the, like what are the kind of applications we would actually be willing to fight to, to take on? Yeah. Anybody well, else is have there? That? Go ahead, Rod. Is there a geographic limit to this? Um, you know, I mean, like, our, where's our mission statement? I think what I hear Aziza saying is, you know, what's our mission statement? What's uh, how do we know we've hit the target? I mean, there's just so much hate-based stuff going on throughout the world, right? So, is there a limit? Is there a geographic preference? Is it throughout the U.S.? Is it does it include all of North America? Does it include, you know, other continents and so forth? Yeah. I think for this purpose, it would be nationally. Um, and then there could be like, you know, if there's somebody who lives in um, Chicago and they know about a fantastic organization in the Chicago metro area, that can be proposed. Um, so it doesn't strictly have to be only national organizations, but 
organizations in the U.S. working in the U.S. Or, so or could we build that into our model where we, um, if we're giving three to five grants, maybe they focus on different things. So mm -hmm. there's two grants for a local uh, organization that has a good model that can be scaled to a national level or something like that, right? Um, or then there's a uh, national organization that's doing educational versus, um, you know, network building or, you know, maybe we can build that into the different types of um, grants we want to fund. Um, I know locally we do a house tour, right? Where it's like a collaborative of interfaith groups and you visit different, you know, houses of worship, and, you know, um, and it's just led by a, a local internet network. Um, you know, say something like that, you know, oh, we like that model, you know, if people are interested and give them the grant, you know, to to train other people how to do their communities. Like, you know, things like that, where for me, I'd like to see um, greater impact. Obviously that's why we're in the skipping circle, but but there's wonderful models that are working already. I mean, what I was just talking about sounds wonderful. Um, you know, so like, how do we get, instead of um, creating new stuff, there's wonderful that's existing and then you know, for me, I would love to see those in other communities and training, you know, different collaboratives or, you know, initiatives to on some of the work we worked in other areas. Seems what I, I think, well, at least for me. I think one distinction that we should talk about is whether we're discussing the goals of the grant making or the goals of participation in the group, because it sounds like it could be two different things. And I wonder if the goals of the grant making should be decided on by the full, you know, members of the giving circle. Yeah. And Muhi, you tell me whether that's how it normally works. I've never participated in a giving circle, but the difference with the goals of actually participating in the giving circle, that's more like you know, we want people to feel like they're a philanthropist, even though they don't identify as that, or we want people to have cross-faith interactions, or we want people to, you know, have um, inter interfaith, you know, grant-making experience, or, or those I feel like are different goals than what we're def defining right now. So where should we be focusing? Yeah, um, I think more so on the mission statement of the giving circle itself makes more sense. And then when it comes to the grant making goals, I think the voting members would be the best to kind of make those decisions going forward. Yeah, I, I, along the same lines, well, first, um, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Lord Watson. I, I apologize, uh, um, I, I got on kind of late. Um, um, I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, my, I guess my background, my faith background is, is I'm a Baptist uh, preacher and also a founder of a um, black led community foundation in uh, Birmingham. Um, but, but, you know, along those same lines, you know, the thing about giving circles, um, I think it has, it has two different, um, it has two different ways to impact in, 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 in what it does. One is the impact of just people gathered around this common idea who want to trust each other enough to put money into a pool to decide what to do with the money. Right. It's the circle itself. And then two is the actual grant making that it that it does. Um, and when I when um movie first you know, I kind of heard first heard movie say it, talk about this 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 um this giving circle. Um I liked it because it 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 gives me exposure to people and into thoughts that um I just hadn't I just hadn't had before. Um so that's so as much as the giving circle is about grant making, my my I guess my personal agenda is also to learn more about what I don't know, right? Um, so it's important. I think you, you make it you make it accessible, and and I look at it. I give you two different two different things. You know, do you want a thousand members who can give a thousand dollars? No. Do you want a hundred members who can give a thousand dollars, or do you want a thousand members, two thousand members who will give you twenty five fifty dollars? Which one has the greater impact as far as what we want to accomplish? I think those are those are two ways when I look at giving circles and setting them up. Um, those are my thoughts. Appreciate that. Yeah. 
do we know which way we want to go? Do we want to have a more, a smaller group um, that gives more or a larger group that gives less? Or is that something that's organically going to evolve, you know, as we see who's interested? Um, and I wasn't trying to, you know, talk about grant making so much as like, what is our mission? Like Aziza and Ro mentioned, like, you know, like what is our purpose in pulling these funds? So I was just trying to throw out like what types of projects we could fund just to give us an idea of, are we focusing on collaborative efforts that break down bias between different religions? Are we trying to um, utilize, um, you know, uh, race relations and interfaith relations uh, in the general public? Like, I, I just need like, I understand, you know, um, because I've worked in the field, I understand like fighting hate, but like, do we want like promote peace, but who are we promoting peace with, right? Is it other religions and between just religious community? Are we saying, you know, we want to have there be like less anti-Semitism in the general public and we're gonna do those types of programs, right? So for me, I just need a little bit more clarity because there's so much to do, right? And uh, as much as I want to do all of it, I, I think that we need to be a little bit more clear, especially in bringing people on board, right? So if I'm reaching out to, you know, a local mosque or synagogue, it's like, okay, why would I want to be part of this circle or a group wanting to be a part of this circle? Um, what is like, what are, when we pull these funds, what are we trying to do with them, right? So I, for me, I just want a little bit more clarity and for us to come up with our own mission statement of when we give our funds, when we pool our funds, what do we do with it? What is what what are like at least top three things that we want to do with the with our funding? Yeah, I think in in philanthropy right now, there's a big movement towards funding operations. Um, so I don't think that we should try to restrict to a specific program. Um, but it's good to know what programs those charities offer, right? Um, so I think providing operational funding would be critical. Um, not to have like a really long drawn out application process. It should be a simplified LOI that's no longer than like two to three pages. Um, it should also, um, you know, be encouraged that these organizations maybe collaborate with other organizations too. Um, so those are all things that we can add into the goals. Um, and I think that, you know, I, I like the, the statement that's been kind of developing here. Um, and again, like if there's other thoughts that go into um, what else you think would be helpful when you're telling more people about this, um, like what are those FAQs going to be and how can we um, proactively provide them with the answers? Uh, the, the goal in red on the screen here, it says dismantle hate through relationships across difference. Relationships, um, is education a, a factor that, you know, um, might be included through education? Sure. Yeah. And then whoever was adding in the across difference, uh, was there another thought you wanted to add in to close it out? The only, so the reason I put that in there so that it was clear that they were relationships with different groups or okay. also plurality like within groups like you know for instance like in Muslims like we might be ignoring a whole other sect just because they're not in whatever stream we are so like there's all sorts of difference within okay so to close this out I don't know do you have a thought I mean I, I think the whole idea there is to communicate that it's um there's lots of difference so it's not just religious difference. Well, there's religious intolerance is listed here, but I mean, it could be racial indifference or um, 
<laughs> and racial uh, hate, right? And yeah. irreligious, right? And so, um, mm -hmm. especially ethnic, you know, uh, yeah. So that opens it, you know, wide up, of course. So, like Aziza Wood saying, across racial differences, across cultural differences, like what do, what do you feel the differences are? Well, I mean, so that maybe maybe that's part of where we have to make a hard choice, right? We mm. could say, like, for instance, like Rod, like you've got this beautiful program where you've got like Amir Hussein, right? And he's a Muslim speaking from a Muslim perspective, right? About and he's educating people. Um, and I'm they can Muslim. engage with the subject matter, but that's cross religious lines. Um, and it's like, for me, from my perspective in Newground, like it's just as important to, sorry, I thought that was quiet. Um, it's just as important to make sure that your audience is diverse so that they can respond and say, uh, that doesn't cover me, I'm missing here. And here's why it's important. Like, so like people are owning their voices in ways. So what I'm saying by difference is, is, is a diversity that is racial, but if we have but we don't have anything, any reference to religion here in this mission. So I, that's why I was actually very, I was leaving it open so that it could be across difference. Um, I mean, it's interesting, like you have different sects even within, I think, religious. There's inter-religious and intra-religious peace building, right? Yeah. So oftentimes, uh, sects within a particular tradition are it's easier to it's easier to unite people across religious lines than than uh intra-religious lines you know much easier <laughs> very true yeah and uh, do we want to say we want to promote peace and understanding or dismantle hate are we Ooh, i like that like you know affirm yeah. what we want, not what we don't want yeah I just, I, I, I always try to, you know, in the words of um, Mother Teresa, she's like, you know, I'm not against anything, I'm for peace, right? So, um, so I, I always, for me, when I try to do mission statements, I don't like to put what I'm fighting against, but that's not my call, whatever. But I just wanted to put that out there that um, building peace and building understanding and building camaraderie or whatever we want to put, I like a positive statement rather than, and, and we could have like, you know, dismantling hate in, in other aspects, but that's just something I want to throw out there. That's a good point because the, from the perspective of the haters, right, like they're, they're not engaged in hate per se, they're engaged in some other cause like like patriotism or you know whatever right so they don't they don't see their actions often as hateful as they do like trying to protect uh, our community or whatever so that's a good good point yeah i i was in a dialogue uh, a few weeks ago with someone who was a ex kkk member supremacist and and it was very interesting because you don't always hear that perspective. And he was saying, you know, we don't we don't go out there and do what we do because we think we're wrong, right? We're, we're doing it because of belonging. This is how we belong. You know, other ethnic groups and racial groups or religious groups, they have their own, you know, group. We don't have a group, right? And we, and so once he left that, you know, and said, you know, now I feel like I belong to a, a larger group, but it really comes down to that sense of belonging to, you know, was it like he was, thought he was against anything, he thought he was for something. And um, it's always good to hear different perspectives on that because that's not something I would have thought about someone who was hating, you know, and, and doing these acts, so. Cool, the, yeah, I like, I like your placement of focusing on what we work towards. Um, so I made some adjustments. So the way that it would read is 
the Interfaith Giving Circle Confronting Hate supports organizations financially that work to convene relationships and education across faith-based communities towards peace building. Uh, just needs, a, I feel like it just needs a little bit of wordsmithing, but I feel like overall the message is there. And even the word peace can be like, um, you know, uh, I mean, building bridges of understanding the respect sometimes, you know, is, is helpful. I mean, I'm all for peace building, but like some people see that as a political endeavor when they see that word peace building, you know, it's like between nation states and stuff and they're like, give up hope quickly. But um, yeah, Rod, I like what you just yeah, said, building can you repeat what you just said bridges building? of understanding and respect bridges i of like understanding that and respect. can we add that <laughs> sorry aziz i think i cut you off i'm sorry not at all i was you said what i was wanting to say so perfect so with that like and i agree like just a little bit more fine-tuning um uh, Shazine, are you saying take out the word confront hate from this vision statement altogether? Because um, it would build in the affirmative um, or because we do have it here. Yeah, and I, I mean, I know that's what we've been organizing under, but I, I want to throw that out there for everyone. It's, I, I'd like to see it more of a positive towards something rather than against something, but that's for the group to decide. I, you know, I definitely feel um, comfortable removing confronting hate and just let it be the inner faith giving circle. I mean, that we support, you know, organizations financially that work to convene relationships and education across faith-based communities to building bridges of understanding and respect. And then would you feel like the the grant making goals of the qualified organizations would have that um, xenophobia or religious intolerance lens still, or do you want to completely remove that aspect? Say that again. I think. Well, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. So, oh, I just want to get that restated. Yeah. No, yeah. You know, if if it's removed from the title of the giving circle, I think that's fine. Uh, but when you when you come across organizations that you want to support, should the religious intolerance or the xenophobia lens be present amongst the type of organizations the group wants to fund? I think that should be a factor, like the organizations actively working um, to break down barriers, right? Mm -hmm. To understanding, um, you know, um, and, and maybe that's in our rating scale, right? Are they working on that? Are you saying, is it a disqualifier if they're not doing that work? Is that what you're asking? When we, or um, when we put out our like, you know, what we're going to fund. Um, so are you saying if they're not, so that's okay. So I'm trying to process this. So, so you're saying that only organizations that are actively working against hate would be able to apply versus ones that are promoting more collaborative efforts to do stuff like, you know, like, like Rod's group where they're working on a specific issue, but from an interfaith perspective rather than working against hate. Yeah, I, I think as long as it's part of, uh, again, like one of the criteria should be that it's promoting tolerance, promoting understanding, um, confronting hate, like those types of things. Oh, well, you know, when I think about even before grant making, when I think about the people who will join or who will give to be a part of the giving circle, um, you know, 
you know, I think we all have to, you know, we have to kind of state who we are because um, giving circles are not for everybody. And so I think it's okay to say, you know, that, you know, you know, that, you know, as, as not only our mission statement, but, you know, we also believe in the importance of being faith-based um, or having a lean of practice so that the people who come, who are part of it have that. And so it automatically it's putting your grant making. And you can state it there too, but. Um, I think it's just important that we're clear about the type of members of the circle that you want, um, as well as the type of organizations that you want to apply for funding. Yeah. And I think that's part of the thing that I wanted us to focus on is because if we did partner with um, other foundations to support this effort like we would need to be clear on also what that what that looks like but also at the same time you know understanding that it's an interfaith council i would also feel comfortable with removing anti-semitism or islamophobia because those are two very specific right um so what's a better way to say that um, for all religions? We could say religious based uh, religious based hate or something like that where yeah. it's more inclusive. Okay. Like there, I mean that we could also do be in the firming pluralism, mm -hmm. which covers all. So, okay, Muhi, I did uh, suggest in changing tolerance to respect. Yeah, that's fine. I'm, I am I don't like the word tolerance, um, personally. It, I just feel like it's like, okay, I'm being tolerated. Um, to me, that's just not enough. That's not going far enough. Um, so mutual, that's personally. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm with you on that. It's I, I, I like mutual appreciation, you know, like we we grow to appreciate each other, not just tolerate each other. <laughs> right. Um, Aziza, what was the word you said? Uh, religious? Pluralism. Pluralism, got it. I like that. Would that be better than understanding here? Sure, does that fly with Rob, Rod? Um, I, I think they're different, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Is we have we have the understanding here in the mission statement, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. um, so I'm just trying to make it more. I'm fine with keeping it here, but I think it's already stated. Yeah. I really do like the phrase that you have, Rod. Mutual um, respect, or what did you say? Mutual appreciation. Mutual appreciation. I like that. And cooperation, right? Like we're AI is all about moving beyond tolerance and going to mutual appreciation and cooperation. Let's work together for the common good. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Where we actually see value in each other. Like that's yeah. And as partners in uh, Tikkun Olam or, you know, uh, mm -hmm. serving humanity. Sure. Um, so this is, this is really good. I like the progress that we've made. This has been a really enriching discussion. Um, seeing that there's about four minutes left, um, we can definitely come back to the minimum contribution um, part of the equation in our next conversation if we need more time. Um, but I would hope that we can meet again before the end of April, um, if that's comfortable with everyone, um, just to keep the conversation going. Um, perhaps in that last week of April, I can send another doodle um, and see what works best for the group. Um, but any other, any other thoughts on the goals and this mission statement? No, I'm not, I only appreciation. Thank you for flowing into this. I feel like, yeah, I'm excited about it. Good. Yeah.
taking shape. So, for sure. Um, so I, I think talking items for next time, um, we can focus on like positions of the leadership committee. Um, and then focus on the minimum for voting members. I think those would be two great places to continue the conversation. And you guys have access to this document. If you do make changes going forward, I would just mention do it in the suggestion mode. So that way um, I can review it later. Um, and then when we have our next meeting, we'll focus on the timeline the leadership committee positions and the minimum contribution level. Does that sound good? Sounds great. Sounds great. Awesome. I know this is taking a lot of your time and energy, but I think that it's um, a really exciting conversation. Um, and I love how it's evolving um, over these last few meetings that we've had. Um, so this is all thanks to your dedication and support. And I think that, you know, in a few months, we'll be in a really good place to launch this nationally. Um, and each of you are going to be critical components of that promotionary period as well. Um, so more to come on that. And um, yeah, if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out at any time. Thank you. Good, thank thank you. you. Good seeing everyone. Take of care. Thank Take care. you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.